Let's see if I can connect on my computer. Well, hey, hey, I'm Shamari, and I am a relationship and intimacy coach, and I help millennial women get the confidence and pleasure they deserve so they no longer settle for lack of satisfaction, especially in relationships. So um, I will be starting to do these weekly lives where I'll be answering some questions. So I have been asking for people to submit questions to me, and I'm going to be answering some of those questions today. I do have four specific questions. I'm not trying to be on here for too long, um, but I did want to kind of show face so you guys can get to know me. Um, so the first question, I have my questions here. So how to deal with partners with very different sex drives. Um, so typically, um, I'm, I'm not sure which side of the, the um, relationship the person is on that asks this question, but typically what we want to do, we want to start with ruling out things. We always want to rule things out before we start to come up with a plan. So first, um, any medical or physical issues that a person may have, hey, hey, um, any physical or medical conditions um, that may be affecting a person's sex drive. So that can be um, diseases, conditions, um, but that's also any medication that you're taking, any supplements that you're taking. Um, birth control sometimes can have that effect. So you want to rule out any of those things because that can affect um, your libido. Um, and the next thing other than that would be mental health and stress related sort of things that in your environment. So if you're stressed out, you're not very likely to want to be in a sexy mood. Um, it's just not very likely that that's going to happen. Or if you're going through a bout of depression or you're really anxious, um, you're not really thinking about that. That's not where your motivations lie. Um, so that's something else that can potentially affect your libido and you definitely want to rule that out as well. Um, and if any of those things are a concern for you and you're not 100% sure if it's that or something different um, always check with the doctor if you have a therapist um, definitely check with the therapist if you don't have one but you are dealing with mental health struggles um, trauma anything like that you always always I always recommend going to a therapist just to just to see um, if there's something deeper going on and if they can equip you with some better coping skills so that it's a little bit more manageable for you um, and then once you check on those things if those are not the issue at all um, a few other things that can impact libido is relationship satisfaction so if you're not happy with your partner um, you feel like like something's missing in your relationship um, that makes you a lot less likely to want to be intimate with that person um, not always some people are wired differently but that can definitely have a huge impact on that um, changes with your body and just your confidence level can definitely impact your libido as well if you don't feel like you're at your best self you don't necessarily want to share that with someone else or maybe you're not comfortable sharing that with someone else so that's something else that you want to take a look at and there are ways to increase your confidence so even if you have low self-esteem you feel worried about your body or whatever the case may be there are ways that you can work on that um, and you might notice that there is a difference with your libido following working on some of those things um, and the other thing is um just maybe you don't like what you're doing um sometimes we can get into a rut into a kind of a, a pattern of doing things so we just we know this is how we start this we do this next we do that and then it's over right so if you're constantly kind of going in this same pattern even if it's kind of a mix up in the middle but it the same pattern same location same times of day um same everything um that can get pretty boring for people sometimes um, some people like having that consistency, but some people don't. So sometimes that can impact you as well. Um, so you wanna look at those things and if any of those things are um, something that you think might be impacting the um, change in libido or the differences in libido, then you definitely want to try to adjust some of those things. So like I said, working on 
um, any self-confidence issues that you may have, um, working on changing things up, um, work on the intimacy. So if you feel like the relationship satisfaction, if you're always arguing or you feel like you're mothering someone, you, you don't want to be intimate with your child, right? So you want to change some of those things up and then you might notice that there is a difference, like I said, an increase or a leveling of differences with the, the libido. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention too is sometimes we have very different views of what the role of intercourse would be in our relationship or the role of sexual relations um, and what that means for us um, and having a, a very open conversation and exploring what that meaning is and how you interpret it within the context of a relationship is very important so for some people they feel like that they need that in order to feel deeper connection to someone and for some people it's just not as important or maybe they just don't have the physical desire in the same way maybe due to hormone levels due to medical condition stress or whatever the case may be they just don't have that same innate feeling or need um, and so if you're going into the situation thinking and knowing that that's what you want um, and that's something that you need but the other person is not thinking that way at all they just think that it's a fun thing to do every once in a while they may not be understanding where you're coming from as far as the desire to do it more the desire to have more of that within your relationship and they may not be understanding why you don't want to do it if you if you are attracted to me you love me so much then why don't you want to share this with me so having that very clear conversation first and foremost um, to get somewhat of an understanding even if you can't empathize you can sympathize and somewhat understand from an intellectual place and then from there that's when we would be able to create action steps like this is what you guys can do as far as specific techniques specific um, behaviors or even just more general like activities that you can do for the exploration in order to see if there is a way to kind of meet somewhere in the middle um, if not um, close close to something that you both can be satisfied with and, and um, who knows what that looks like for your relationship every relationship is different um, but I think those are kind of the, the steps that you would need to take um, the next question is how to deal with decrease in self-esteem due to body changes um, I know as human beings we are very much creatures of habit um, so change can be scary um, it can be nerve-wracking it makes you nervous makes you anxious but change the word change is not a bad word um, change is not a bad thing it doesn't have to be a bad thing so even if your body is changing as you grow we get older our body is not the same as it was two years ago ten years ago um, and that's okay um, I, I know sometimes we are constantly comparing our current body maybe to oh in high school I was a hundred pounds um, but that's just not realistic in high school I was also way less wise <laughs> like I was making foolish decisions if I didn't grow um, intellectually I would be disappointed um, so I'm growing physically and it's okay um, it doesn't have to be a bad thing there's ways to learn to love the body that you're in currently so that is by uh, appreciating the things that you do like about it so anytime that you're seeing those negative things or you're feeling like oh I really hate these stretch marks or I hate this part of my body um, thinking about the things that you do like the things that you do really like and love highlighting those um, not that we like we can we always have things that we can work on right but being able to acknowledge the things that we are okay with the things that we can embrace is very important um so shifting attention there but then also thinking about functionality so if you can't find anything that you find visually appealing with your body then thinking about the functionality of your body the fact that you're able to uh, walk around or wake up every day or um, the fact that maybe if you have children the fact that you were able to have children not everyone is able to do that right so you want to think about the things that you can do and even just in a more sexy type of way the the power that your body has that you can please yourself or that you can please someone else that is the ultimate feeling of confidence for me like to be able to think about the function of my body the power that it has so it changing is not 
bad um we make it bad by how we view it and how we think about it don't compare yourself to an older version of yourself or to anyone else um being being able to appreciate what it is that you have right now um the next one there's a guy that i like but i'm not much of a communicator what should i do um so this is not necessarily a problem that i've personally had um i if I like somebody, I'm just gonna tell you I like you. Um, I've kind of always been that way. But um, what you can do, um, when you, I don't know exactly what you mean by not being much of a communicator, but um, you do kind of have to have some sort of conversation. And it doesn't have to be in a way like, hey, I like you, or hey, let's go on a date. Um, just opening conversation to further get to know each other. Typically, if you notice, um, the people you feel closest to or you feel uh, sort of a bond with are the people that you know the most about and that know the most about you. So like my best friend, she knows more about me than my coworkers. That's just what it is. I don't feel that close to my coworkers, not in the same way that I feel to my best friend, right? So same thing, just having conversations, learning about one another, letting things unfold. Um, and I mean, obviously, if you do feel really confident one day, um, just kind of putting it out there if they would be interested or if they're looking for a relationship, if that's what you're looking for, what is it that you want from this person? Do you want a relationship? Do you want just someone to hang out with? Kind of seeing where their head is in that way and not necessarily making it about you specifically. Like, do you want it with me? But just like, hey, what, like, what's going on with you? Like, what are you interested in? What are you needing? Um, and then they can kind of go from there. Um, and Typically, I would say that unless he has like some sort of um, anxiety around it or if he's already in a situation or a relationship or something like that, typically if, it, if, it's, a, um, if it's a guy, um, typically they can kind of um, take initiative from there from, for the most part. Um, but some are very shy, just like we are shy or sometimes they fear rejection the same way that we fear it. Um, and then on the other side of that, it's like rejection. No, it's not fun, but what's the worst that can happen? He says, no, I'm not interested. What happens from there? Nothing. Your life is still going to go on. I promise you it will still go on. Um, and then last question before I get up out of here um, is what can you do if you're going through a dry spell in your relationship? So typically, this is most common in like long-term relationships um, or cohabiting relationships. So if you live with the person, um, typically this is not much of an issue if you're just getting to know someone unless um, you guys have different views on your libido and the role of sex or the frequency um, desire and things like that kind of what we touched on earlier but um, in long-term relationships I don't know how this became a thing where I guess the rules or the expectations kind of change so whenever you're dating someone um, there's always that excitement you plan out dates you plan out when you're gonna see them and even if it's not like a serious relationship if it's a situation ship a friends with benefits you know when you're like you up or oh I, I got an appointment um, coming up on Friday like you plan it out you know that it's coming because you planned it so when you're in a long-term relationship even if you live with this person why is it no longer okay to plan it I don't that I get very confused about people expect oh we live together now or we're serious about each other now you should just know and that's not how it works nobody reads minds so no if you want to take it seriously and you're in a dry spell it's going to be very very difficult first of all to go from nothing to get get it popping again really quickly so planning it out scheduling it making sure that you're putting it on the calendar that takes the pressure off of the individual people to spontaneously create this magic that hasn't been there for whatever the reason. Um, sometimes it happens um, and it, it doesn't necessarily have, um, it's not a bad thing per se because it's a normal thing that happens with the ebbs and flows of relationships, but schedule some time. Um, and it doesn't have to be scheduling um, for you to actually do the do, right? It can be 
scheduling a date, scheduling, maybe we'll do some massages um, with one another, um, scheduling anything that can bring you guys closer together to fill an increase in that intimacy, um, I think can be really helpful. Um, and then just trying new things, like maybe pick an activity or pick um, a position or a location that maybe you haven't done anything before and then you both are going into it it's an adventure it's it's a new sort of thing and there's excitement that gets built up around that um, and then usually a lot of people once they kind of start going again it, it's a little bit easier to keep it going um, but in the beginning if you have to schedule if you have to plan it plan it like you do that when you date people you do that when you got your little boot thing your sneaky link coming through like it's okay to do that when you're with someone as well so those were the questions that i wanted to address today i want to keep it very short because yeah this live situation is still new i'm gonna do it every week um unless there's a holiday or a special occasion in my life, um, or if I just need a mental health break. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be a little bit more consistent now. So if you have questions that you would like for me to answer over time, um, you can always submit those um, in my DMs, but I also post in my story and ask you guys if you wanna submit questions um, sporadically throughout the week. So if you catch that, then definitely submit it there as well. Um, also check out the um, link in my bio that's my easy tree there you'll find the course that i created um, better sex guide to confidence satisfaction and orgasms without faking um, and you'll see that i also have some freebies um, so right now there's two listed um, two kind of worksheet sort of things but i'm also actually right now um, i'll be editing um, a webinar which is about building confidence so if um, you could relate to low confidence or even just even if it's not low you just want to boost it up a little bit more we can always use a little more right so um, the webinar is called come confidently that should be posted if not sometime tonight um, it's still early I'm on the Pacific time um, so if not tonight then you should see that tomorrow um, so you can check that out it's free you get it for the free 99 no cost to you it's about an hour long so you get a lot of information it kind of gives you a sneak peek to um, into kind of how the course would be and the type of information that I provide and a little bit more about my personality to see if you even care about what I got to say <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm Shamari. I'm a relationship and intimacy coach, and I help millennial women get the confidence and pleasure they deserve so they no longer settle for lack of satisfaction. Um, check me out. Follow my page. Um, like I said, if you have anything else that you wanted to get answered, make sure you send that information to me. But otherwise, a good night. Bye, guys. I see y'all. <laughs>